Hi everyone, in this particular video, I'm going to go through the process of how to set up a webhook in Bubble using Shopify. This particular use case is I have my Shopify store and when a customer is created on my Shopify store, I want this information to be automatically set to Bubble so that I can save the customer information on my database. If you're unsure of what a webhook is or when and where you should be using webhooks, please refer to the written guide which has been published alongside this video. There's further links in the description below. Now let's get into the video. The first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that workflow APIs and backend workflows are enabled in Bubble. To do so, I go to the settings tab here and the sub tab API. I then need to make sure that the enable workflow API and backend workflows checkbox is ticked. This will then ensure that when I go to this page dropdown, that backend workflows down the bottom here is visible. So let me click this. Now here I can add a backend workflow. So when I do so, it'll come up with general and new API workflow. And this is what I want to set up. I'll change the name to create customer as this is a, a really good reference for myself internally. Next, what I want to do is I want to change the parameter definition from manual to detect request data. The reason why is that in the case of a webhook, Shopify is sending information to Bubble. So Bubble, it needs to detect the information that's coming in. So I can click detect data. What I'll see here is now a URL, which I'll copy. What this URL is, is that we need to provide this to Shopify or any external service that we are setting up a webhook in. What this is telling this external service is that we want to receive the information that you're sending to this particular URL. So that when in, whenever any information is sent to this URL, Bubble will receive this and then enable a workflow based off this information. So Bubble will always watch this particular URL for any request data. So now what I need to do is I need to set up the webhook in Shopify. So let me jump over to my Shopify tab here. I'm here in the settings of my Shopify store under the section notifications. So let me scroll to the bottom. And what I can see here is a section called create webhook. So let me click that. I can see multiple sections. The first one is event. So I can select a webhook for various events. And when I click it, a dropdown appears with a list of different events. The one that I want to select is customer creation. So this webhook will be triggered when a new customer is created. The format that I want is JSON. So that is correct. This is the URL which I copied before. So I'll pop that in here. For the webhook API version, I will update this to the latest version. I'll now click save. So this webhook has now been set up, but Bubble doesn't know the format of information that's going to be received. So we need to send a test notification or a test piece of information so that it can understand what kind of information is going to be received here so that we can set up our workflow. So if I jump back to this tab and I click send test notification, it will send an example webhook request. Bubble has now received this information. And if I scroll down, I can show the raw data. And what you can see here is the information that Shopify has sent. So this is an example new customer that's been created. Bubble has seen all these key value pairs and has successfully saved this. So I can click save. And now what I can do is I can create a workflow based on this information. So what I want to do is create a new thing, change it to customer, add all fields. And what I can now do is I can select the request data and then the information from that. So email, request data, and name. So now what I've set up is a webhook workflow. So when information is sent to that URL, which I displayed before, Bubble will recognize this information and then create a new customer and trigger that workflow based on receiving this information. And that new customer information will be saved to my database. As a final step, it is also important to remember that I need to update the URL that I set up in Shopify. So this URL has the term initialize at the end. And I want to actually remove this term because I've already initialized the call. So I'll now save this. What I also want to really quickly show now is how to set up manual parameter definition for webhooks. So I'm in the backend workflow tab of the bubble editor, and I'm just going to go here and set up a new API workflow. I'm going to call this test 
webhook. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that exposes a public API workflow is ticked so that an external service can send information to this API endpoint. I will then also make sure that this workflow can be run without authentication is ticked. What I'm also going to do very quickly is I just want to copy this as this is the endpoint that information needs to be sent to to test it. So it's just easier for me to copy it that way. Next, I'm going to go back to manual definition here. And what I really need to do here is manually define the parameters that I'm going to be receiving in my webhook information. So I'm going to be defining the key values here. So the key I'm going to be setting up as par one and par two. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to test this webhook. So I want to send the information to this endpoint and just make sure that it is working and that I can successfully send this. So what I'm going to jump into is a service called Postman. And what Postman allows me to do is it allows me to send the information to an endpoint. And I'm going to paste this URL that I got before, and I'm just going to remove the initialize. The reason why I'm going to remove the initialize is because the endpoint is already initialized as I manually define the parameters required for the endpoint. I'm going to change this to a post call as I'm going to send information in the body. So I'm going to click this part body, and then I'm going to click raw, and then I'm going to change from text to JSON as the information needs to be in a JSON format. And what I want to now send is a payload or um, some JSON information with that, those parameters defined. So what I will do here is I will set the information as follows. So I've got par one, which was defined before, and I've set it to value, and I have par two, and I will set it to value as well. And then now what I want to do is I want to send information and I want to check if it's successfully working and I can see the status is success and I can see that I can successfully send information to this endpoint. Now let me delete this and if I try to send just one parameter, I get a status missing data. There's a missing parameter for the workflow test webhook, parameter part two. The reason why is because I already defined this parameter in my manual parameter definition and it needs to be provided when sending any information via a webhook to this endpoint. Now, a, a benefit of using this approach versus the automatically detecting the request data is that you can then create nested things in that JSON object. So that just gives you a little bit more flexibility and it's just something that's useful to know. So that goes over how to set up a webhook in Bubble. If you have any questions or feedback that you'd like to provide in this video, please feel free to leave a comment below.